Yeah, I think this is a fetish now. So we are finally done. It took us a freaking whole week. Although, let's be honest, it was one day working, three days waiting and another day of work. But still, I am very, very glad that we are finally done with this puppy. And I believe it looks freaking amazing. I love the distro plate in the back. I love that the tubes are all horizontal to each other. I love that Fantex pump distro plate slash reservoir combo. The GPU looks amazing and the coolant in here looks Mwah. I was debated on the tubing. I decided to go for those milky acrylic 16 millimeter tubes and other people around me suggested that regular see-through things would have been better given how black the, the coolant actually is. When I ordered them, I was thinking about that Fantex block in the front with, with the pump because that's also like semi see-through milky. And I believe the whole thing would look better if I combine more milky see-through materials. The only downside to it is that you don't see like pure blackness of the coolant basically anywhere except for the distro plate in the back and inside of the GPU and on the tubes it does create like a dusty effect. I believe the, the tubes look a bit dusty. It's weird but they are not dusty. They are clean as hell but yeah it looks dusty. For myself I love how this whole thing turns out. The tubes, the horizontalness, I everything about this I freaking love. The only thing that I'm not so happy about is the chrome part on the GPU. Now, I'm just not that much into Chrome and it's the only reflective thing inside this whole build and I would have preferred to have this in black or white, would have been okay with the case, but it didn't exist back then. I'm okay now with it. The whole concept looks amazing. The whole PC looks amazing. That's like the only part that I'm like, yeah, I, I would have changed that if I could. But still, for me, the whole thing looks freaking amazing. Now for the coolant we used, that was some of that Gochilla premix all black uh, I'm going to destroy your furniture. Yeah, it's a very good coolant. We had a couple of benchmarks with it months ago. The only problem of that thing is it's impossible to clean. During filling, everything was okay, but I had to refill my, like that squishy bottle off camera here to be exact. Yeah, and I did it a bit too fast and then it like, overfilled and it went on my table, my mouse pad, everything is grayish now. My whole table is dirty and I'm unable to clean it. I will try to sand it down. My fingers full of that black stuff. It's impossible to clean, really. But it cools really, really well. It's just that, that cleaning part. However, ignoring the whole uh, impossible to remove section inside the GPU block, this looks freaking beautiful. Oh, this, is, this is my stuff. Now, before we end this, I did redo the same, I won't say benchmarks, temperature benchmarks that we did with the original Fantex AIO, the MP360, and with the NHD15. And to give you some numbers, with the original Fantex AIO, the system was unable to keep up with 5.1 GHz. Just unable, it hit 100 degrees C immediately with the NHD15, it happened even quicker, and then it slowly dropped to 5.0, 4.9. Now with this setup, with the same settings, we are sitting at a very stable 5.1 GHz on the P cores and what was it, 3.8 or 3.9 on the on the E cores, and we are sitting at 88 to 89 degrees C under full load using Fulmark CPU burner, but 88 to 89, that's between 12 or 11 and I have no idea how much degree C because it was unable to keep up with that clock speed. So that's a very, very good result. And on that note, of course the fans do cool the whole thing, but they are not that much of a necessity in here right now. Like I can reduce the fan speed and it will have minimal impact on the temperature. As long as they somewhat spin, the temperatures are freaking amazing. And we also tested the GPU alone doing Fermark 4K 8x MSAA. The original 3090 Ti with that tough cooler was hitting about 68 degrees C and it had a hotspot on 82.2 and, and, and somewhat degrees C. Now with this setup, the GPU is sitting at 56 degrees C, so already 12 degrees below and the hotspot is sitting at 79. So very, very good temperatures. No matter what I will do, this thing will never thermal throttle. It can't thermal throttle. So temperature-wise, a 60mm 420 red is 
That's what you need to cool down a 12900K, 13900K and probably also 7950X. The only thing that I'm very unhappy about is the fact that I couldn't fit that second 360 red in the top. That would have been amazing. Now when I'm looking at it, of course it would have never fit. I mean the 420 in the front is already hitting the roof. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking when, when I was designing the idea for this. But uh, yeah, not, not my brightest moment. That's just how it is. I don't know how much more the temperatures would have dropped. I believe not a lot. Maybe one or two degrees C on the CPU and then the main goal would have been to just turn down the fan speed even further. But uh, still, this is very, very good. More than acceptable. This is more than I will ever need. This will never thermal throttle, it's amazing. So yeah, I believe this was the whole build. For me, now it's bleeding time. I bled it to the fullest extent that I was able to do it here, but it will take a couple of days, a bit of movement, a bit of here, a bit of there, until everything goes to the reservoir and then I can take it out in the front and refill it and all of that. We have a bit of an air bubble inside the CPU block. That's a bit annoying. It will take time to get that one out. And because we have like one reservoir and one distro plate, it's, it's kind of hard to get the air to move to one place it's going to take a bit but uh, now it's already usable so I'm, I'm already glad about that but yeah for this series I think this was about it hell of a lot of time but for me the result is amazing but you tell me in the comments do you like this what would you have done differently and please don't tell me put a 3900k in there I know about that I will do that after I'm done with the 3900k uh, but what else would you have done differently I'm pretty sure a bunch of people aesthetically want something different but you tell me on another note do you like this kind of uh, videos where we like do a big ass build over the span of a week and then film the whole process is that something that you know we should redo in the future but okay for today i believe this was about it uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you haven't watched the other episodes i think there are like seven have a look at them and uh, yeah i hope to see you in the next one bye bye